What's going on family? It's your brother Lawrence here with another episode of Watch God Work. In each episode, we get the unique pleasure to talk to brothers and sisters who are doing exceptional work in every field of human endeavor, business, culture, civic leadership, art, you name it. And they're sharing their God story, the ways in which God has been a part of their life and the ways in which God informs their work. And today it is no different. I have my brother, Chris Flanagan. What's going on, good chief? How you doing, good brother? Thank you for having me, man. It's a, it's a pleasure to be able to share space with oh, you. Oh, man. It, it is mutual respect, yo. I, I, we were even talking beforehand, man, and I said, man, there are, there are figures that I think that many of us have come to know over the years, those figures that you see from, from the boxes in, you know, on the, in the CVS aisle to the, the, the commercials. And it almost <laughs> feels like these are like representatives of the culture, that they embody who we are and they give us the best representation. Yeah. And brother, man, there's been a from from even before a Tyson and the like, there have been some brothers out there that have just been representing us fully. And I, I remember being introduced to my brother, at least at least through a note. I think when it was a Scotch Porter thing years ago. And I'm like, yo, my bro, I'm seeing my man's everywhere, bro. Like, you know, and I said, man, he is that dude of our generation. And I want to I want to wow. read something. <laughs> brother, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, it, man, I'm, 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 yo, bro, I give people their flowers early. And I'm going to read something. I'm going I'm I'm to read something. And so when I got introduced, I read something, man. And this is how I'm going to start off. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open the floor to you to kind of say, who is Chris Flanagan? It was June 30th, 2015. Obviously, my brother's a July baby. We ain't going to get into that. And it said, yeah. my Lord, thank you. I understand that you didn't have to choose me, but you did anyway. Thank you for being better to me than I could ever be to myself. Ooh, let the track breathe. Affording me all of these wonderful opportunities. I'm truly grateful for my blessings and take nothing for granted. These are these are not my words. These are not uh, you know anonymous words. These are the words of my brother Chris. You know, you didn't up in the book. brother man. <laughs> That these, these are the words of our brother, not just my brother, our brother, Chris Flanagan, from the very beginning, making it very clear. That was very early on. That was fashion at BET. He captured a moment where he was just giving glory to God. And that made me say, let me hook on and make sure I could follow my brother and see what he's doing. Chris Flanagan, bro. Who is Chris Flanagan, man? Wow. An underdog. Um, an underdog who had every reason to give up, every reason to to quit, to, to give in, um, you know, but a fighter, a warrior, not a warrior. One thing I know is that God has created a fighter in me. You know, I love boxing. So I always relate life is synonymous to boxing. Um, anything can happen, you know, anything can change and one punch can change anything. You just gotta hang in there. You know what I mean? Endure a little bit. You're going to get hit. You got to take punches too. You know what I'm saying? But you start to get, start to figure it out. And you start to, start to become a little bit more familiar through experience, right? And, um, you know, but Chris Flanagan is just a, a, a what you see is what you get type of guy. Me so well, um, like I said, an underdog for sure. Because it wasn't always like this, you know which is why I'm so grateful and so appreciative. I went through an extreme transformation and it was um, humbling, but also scary. So uh, a couple of things, you know, cause things start coming fast and temptation comes fast and offers come fast. And you know, I always made sure to make sure that my spiritual, my spirituality has been centered with God because I know that to discern my decision-making accordingly, with respect to the fact that I'm not going to make the right decision every time. But as long as I'm centered, you know, I can make peace with what happened. Mm, mm. Brother, those, those are bars, bro. Those are bar I want to start early, man, because I think I think I think your your affinity to boxing and fighting is clear. If anybody's following some of your words, your spec work, the champs work that you've done. Um, but. What was your earliest fight, brother? Like when you think about your life, what was the earliest where you realized, man, I had to fight? I had to, you know, in order to get this. Confidence. 
I had to fight through a confidence crisis. I'm talking about a serious confidence crisis because, you know, you grow up as an adolescent, you want to be accepted, mm. you want to be liked, you want to be appreciated, you know, and you want to fit in. I just didn't do those things. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't fit in. And, you know, you would go home and grandma and moms and auntie would build you up, but you're going to be just fine. But you want your peers to, to kind of see that same thing, right? Um, but my affinity for boxing and fighting came early. I had to fight through feeling so less than myself, um, which, like I say, I can appreciate this, this time in my life where, you know, there, there, there are, there's attention. And I don't fight with that attention. It just, it happens, but I, don't, I know I don't fall for, you know, what the excitement of a, a normal, I wouldn't even say normal, but your average guy would really be like, oh, Ah, you know, huh. but me, I'm just like, you know, I'm cool, I'm composed. I don't, I don't really feed into any of that. Um, but yeah, to ask you a question, I, I've had to fight through a serious, serious confidence crisis. Mm. This is interesting. I think for people who don't know that, know your story, and like you said, from the outside in, it could seem like you, you bird man hand rubbing through <laughs> through life. <laughs> But, nah, it can look like that. It can absolutely look like that. But, but, but you, this, uh, as far as true. this is why uh, this is why I'm curious, man, because around your your path, man. So, 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 one, I, I think when people are thinking about these brands again, I, I kept it really light. You know what I'm saying? Because right now that your your, yeah. your your portfolio of things have worked, but we're we're talking about even some of the up now. I don't call up and coming established. We're talking about you know, a Bolin, our brother Bolin, man. You being a part of that, Grand Marnier, Milano wow. de Rouge, man. You got. You, you're moving on a lot of these brands and spaces, Fashion Nova, but when it, people didn't know that the brothers was on Fashion Nova, you know what I'm saying? You, you've been... Exactly. But, that happened first, and I was like, wow, like, I couldn't believe that. Brother, yeah. so so I'm thinking, I'm, I'm bringing that up because it seems like such a contrast to what you're talking about. So what was the bridge from oh, yeah. lack of confidence to I'm, I'm in front of a camera rocking like take us on a journey like let us walk with you take us on a journey from that moment and then what what doors what was the journey like to get to the first opportunity absolutely so i didn't finish college i finished high school i'm not a college graduate i didn't i don't even think i finished a full year right but i knew that i wanted to i'm a i'm a hard worker that's just me i knew that that about me i i want to work i want to get out and work i mean school i'm not downplaying school it's, it, you know, it could be for people, but it's not for everybody, right? So I kind of took, I, I accepted that about myself early. And that was the hardest thing to accept is that, you know, yeah, you know, get an education, get, make sure you're established, make sure you do this. And I really put that pressure on myself, but I just was not happy. I wasn't happy. I wanted to work. I wanted to get involved, be around people and exercise my people, my, my, my skills, my people person skills. And I felt like, you know, the only way that I can really start to get some confidence is to really talk to people because I just wasn't doing that. Um, and then I got a job at uh, Simply Wholesome, which is not too far from here in LA. I got a job at Denny's. I was working for Denny's probably, I worked for Denny's franchises probably almost 10 years of my mm -hmm. life, right? Um, I worked at 7-Eleven. I mean, I've been humble, very meek, humble beginnings. And it was just only to build my confidence so that I could talk to people. And, you know, um, so as I'm like walking through this journey of working at Denny's, I'm doing late night shifts and, you know, I'm not thinking much of myself. I had braces for like 10 years of my life too. So I felt like a mental jail and I didn't think I was ever going to get out of that. Um, and, you know, late night, a lot of ladies would come in like, oh, you need to do this. You should be doing this. And, why aren't you doing this? And I'm just like, I don't really know. You know, I'm not, that's not me. Mm. All of a sudden, I was talking to a young lady and she had put me as her screensaver and she went to lunch with a friend of hers who had started a model management company. Mm. She's like, who's this guy? She's like, oh, this guy I'm talking to. And she's like, so she comes back, she tells me, like, hey, my friend, she's starting a company. She wants to shoot you for free. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm not doing that. I'm good. Like, I just, you know, like, I think it'll be a great opportunity. And she's like, she's gonna shoot you for free. Like, just, you know, what, what, can you, what do you have to lose? And that's what I thought. I'm like, what do I have to lose? I don't have anything to lose. Go back to Denny. Like, you know what I mean? And figure it out. Once I went to that first shoot, it opened my eyes. Like, I'm just like, you know what? I really think I can take over this game. 
my way. You know what I'm saying? Not like everybody else. It's going to be the most unconventional way. It may take me longer. It may take me shorter. But the way that I'm going to be able to have control of my career is really what I was looking for. Because I know there's a lot of models, a lot of talent that get put under an umbrella. And there's favoritisms, but you're still under an umbrella, but you're still getting wet because the people that they love are right directly under the umbrella. But if you're just on the outside, you're still getting wet. You're not completely dry. I need to know that I'm dry. Mm. So to control from there was just like, you know, once I got past the initial awkwardness of shooting, uh, I changed my look. I grew my hair a little bit. The braces came off. And I always said this. I said, when these braces come off, <laughs> I'm going to change the game. You know what I mean? I'm really coming for everybody. I'm taking names. This chip on my shoulder is so much bigger. I'm telling you. And um, every brand, every agency that overlooked me, I was literally moving through my, my journey. We can talk about that later. Like, look, I'm making, I'm going to make you regret it. And that was my, that was my attitude for a lot of people from high from junior high to high school, to college, to early twenties. I wanted to make everybody feel it, but humbly. Yo, I, 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 I want to play this back. I don't want people to miss this, man, because there's so many jewels in what you said. I think one on the front end, you're talking about acceptance and accepting yourself. <clears throat> and regardless of what that's going to apply to, I think there's something to be said about being clear and accepting who you are, right? Because I always make this yes. example. I'm just like, I couldn't imagine the Jacksons like, you know, at, at, business, at business school or something. You know what I'm like, It seems so odd what people with that much gift and talent, right? To, to think that the path is so linear and that it fits everyone and trusting that thing inside that said, this is not me. Two, the serendipity of you being open and just enough. It wasn't like you were super open. It was just like, yo, yo, I got this on screen. So think about all those things because that's gonna bring me to my next my, my, my next pace. So like, wow, you know, to put it on screen, Sarah, if she didn't do that at the same time that she started in this agency joint, at the same time that I happened to be open, even though I waved off the pick and was like, nah, I don't want it the first time. Who knows what will wow. happen? Bro, what, so let me ask you then, man, because I think this humble piece is something that I think people are going to take a lot from. Where were you? Okay. What was God to you at that stage of your life, right? You're kind of, you're doing the work. You're like, you know what? Yo, I got to do what I got to do. I'm doing the work. But who was God? What was God to you at that time? Still everything, you know, and something that I would like kind of, and, and something that I can admittedly say that I would, you know, just... Not, I would never like pick him up and put him down. I always held him here in my spirit, in my heart, and everything. So God has always been everything. And me understanding how his process works, how his timing works, and all not getting away from that because it can get frustrating to be like, man, this isn't happening when I want it to. But I got to remember that his time is perfect. And there are certain things working behind the scenes that I have no idea about. There are certain people that are looking at my profile that I have no idea who are looking at. And that's the thing that kind of gave me a little bit of a, a security blanket and an insurance policy is that you never know. I was in my garage taking selfies, man, working at Denny's, working at working at uh, 7-Eleven and working somewhere else. I was working at a hotel, working three jobs. And I was just like, when I get free time, just go in the back, take some selfies, post it and just do that. And then I saw my picture get reposted once. So I'm like, what are my all these followers coming from? Hmm. And that started snowballing, man. And I literally just, oh, God, I knew that his purpose for me was better than my plan. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> so even, even when I had a plan to just kind of come in the industry and take over the way I want to and, you know, really let people know that I'm not in control. Every single solitary thing that has happened in my life is not a direct reflection of what I've done. Mm. It's, it's his glory. That is, you know, that I'm an example of. That's it. You know what I mean? And uh, I just feel like, you know, when it comes down to honing in on being able to understand what your what the timing is behind how he works, it makes your life easier. Mm. His purpose is better than my plan. <laughs> That's, that's a word for somebody, man. That's a word. That's a word for, for somebody, man. Yo, 
I'm curious about the genesis, man, because even for the, the way you even articulate your sense of carrying God with you or God just being with you in that and just doing what you could today. Like, you know what? I'm working. I'm doing this today. And I've just allowed what I'm seeing to happen. I've just stepped into that. God has been all in that. What was it? Just, who introduced you to kind of God? How, how did, you know, initially when you just figured out who he was, who was the introduction? What was the genesis of your relationship? The genesis of my relationship was Psalms 23rd, the 23rd Psalm. My grandmother made me memorize that joint when I was, I think I was probably about six or seven. And she was like, hold this near and dear. And as I got a little older, I started reading about Job. And Job was the one that really was like, oh my goodness, like had every reason to just be like, you know what, God, I don't know what's going on. And he had no clue, but he knew his belief, his, the God's purpose was bigger than whatever plan he had. Lost everything and got it all back. We all know the story, but it, it only because he was so steadfast and he knew, he, he truly knew how God worked. Mm -hmm. I've been in the most frustrating situation and circumstance, and I, I'm human, so I do get frustrated, but I always give God his respect. And I'm like, you know what, regardless of how, how catastrophic this is, your plan and your purpose is just so much more bigger than mine. And I have to be okay with it. You know, as hard as that is for everybody to accept and to be like, you know what, these things aren't happening or, you know, it's one thing after another. And it is going to be like that. But sometimes you got to really put yourself in a position and think about what is God trying to teach me about myself or show me or produce in me? Because not everything is going to be, you know, ready made. You know, we have to take develop certain things, you develop endurance, you develop strength, you develop agility, you develop elusiveness. And, and I'm just talking about things, you know, in boxing and in sports, synonymous again, but these things that God allows us to have are innate and we have to tap into them. You know, it's on us. So, you know, ultimately I make sure that God is always at the center and and with the things that I understand that, you know, hey, the 23rd song was my genesis. Job was one of the, the greatest stories. Uh, Galatians 6, 9, I believe. Do not worry. Do not get weary in well-doing. For in due time, you will reap. The harvest. You will reap your harvest, right? Those, those, <laughs> those scriptures, like, near and dear, help me get through. Man, this man, I I love this because I think one this resonates on a deeper level, particularly if you're you're one who's looking back, right, and the importance of those seeds that that grandparents parents sowed that may not be sure, but like the word doesn't come back void. There's gonna be work in that. I I also see this as someone recognize it for you as an amazing amazing father, right, who takes pride yeah. in that and seeing like okay. What do I need to do to drop seeds, right? For for for, for my son. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I'm now even now pushing now around what I call like the tension, right? Because I, I always think about this even around boxing, period, right? Because so let's take the boxing analogy. I you know, whether people love Mayweather or they like a De La Hoya cat or they kind of old school her, her it's always consistently boxing and how much discipline that requires. But then Absolutely. when people think about even modeling the pressure, it almost is like you can't not be on because your body, your appearance is the product. It's the, it's what you're giving. So to what God. extent, how have you, how has you, how have you been able to lean on God or the things that you've learned or, or, or the thing that you understand to give you the strength to just, because I can imagine people just being overwhelmed to say, I can't even rest. I can't even get no cheat day out this piece. Can I go get McDonald's? Like, like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know it's, I know my, f shout out to my California in and out. I guess it's in and out. My bad, my bad, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you get my point, right? How do you find peace when there's so much demand for you to be on related to your work? So the peace comes from prayer, mm. right? At my on my open line of communication with God, the only way I can truly communicate to Him, because the way I see it is too, the way that the only way I can give God what He really needs from me is to continually serve Him, to believe, mm -hmm. to continually impose my 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 habits, which is to pray, give Him give Him thanks daily. Mm -hmm. I'm often I, I think I go through through uh, 
four times an hour thanking them just to, to thank them. You know what I mean? Because there have been times in life where I couldn't have been here. Um, but the peace comes from prayer. And I, it, is a, it is a lot. And it does get overwhelming at times. But I think that the, the way that God has produced me, and I'm just now getting up into, you know, higher demand and stuff like that. So as the demand, as the demand gets higher, I'm always uh, cognizant of just being able to keep my line of communication with God so wide open mm. because it does get stressful. It does get hard. There are times I cannot sleep until 3.45, 4.15 in the morning, and I'm waking up for a call time at 7.15, 8 o'clock just based off of the fact that I'm just wanting so much for myself. But at the same time, I'm always reminded, God always puts this in my head, like, don't put so much pressure on yourself. The battle is already won, mm. you know? It's already won. So as soon as I hear him say that, I'm always like recenter, recalibrate, you know what I mean? And I'm always like, this is nothing. I've been through so much more tougher situations coming from Lemur, coming from, you know, having to walk up and down Vernon and Crenshaw and everything like, like, you know, nothing is tougher, you know, and God has been so faithful and so great to me. I don't even have room to complain about what happened. You mm. know what I mean? It's me. Mm. Y'all, man, th that, that's, gonna, that's powerful pe for people to hear, I think, how you recenter, right? You know, when you're on. So, you know, whether somebody's a doctor full time and they're on or they're just like this, this sense of being on. Is something that you're saying, yo, man, because I'm in demand, I'm in higher demand, I lock in even more, right? So even four times an hour, I'm praying, I'm checking in. And then you're also reflecting and being like, yo, look at what I've been able to navigate through because of God. So right. I don't need to perform here. I will be good. You know, this, uh, this, there's, man, that that's rich, man. I, what I'm, what I'm curious about now is, you know, whether you've ever felt any attention, because now, as you said, the demand is going up, but it's just not just demand within this vertical, you know, shout out to, to, to you, man. And, uh, you know, having your, 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 first major credit, you know what I'm saying? Rico, Rico, Rico in the house, you know what I'm saying? For he said, she said movie. Uh, so shout out you, Juju doing that. Um, and you touched on obviously a, a pretty heavy topic of adultery and, and things that happen and go down, but I could just only yes. imagine how do you navigate what, you know, if any, how do you navigate what you would call maybe the tension and boundary of like, you know what? I'm already in modeling. I'm showing off my body. I'm not saying that that's yeah. like, no, like God, like God is not limited. Right. So it's just like, I'm in this space because we need people who know him in this space. But do you, have you ever had a tension or ever had a call where you're like, I don't know about this player or has there been, yeah. what's been the conversation with God around what you decide to do and what you decide, you know what? Maybe that's not the one for me. Great, great question. So, Lawrence, the first thing that I do, I've already made peace with myself in my career that I'm not going to do anything that compromises my soul. Mm. And I, I, I have that as a clause for my contracts. I'm not, there's no nudity. Mm. There's nothing that's, that's too overly suggestive. Even the scene in the movie mm. was very, just like, you know, it wasn't really even anything because even while we're filming, there's not even like, it's not just us in the room. So it's just a couple of different people. It's close set, but make sure the comfort level for me has to be just as much for the young, <laughs> for, for the woman too. I, I'm not just, you know, jumping at, jumping for joy just because it's, you know, a certain celebrity or a counterpart just because, you know, she's beautiful. i my soul. I need to make sure that because I'm accountable to God, that he's ultimately still satisfied with the work that I'm doing. Mm. And I'm still honoring him and giving him reverence for the, for the abilities that he's gifted me with. Mm. But I'm not ever, I've been offered to do, do shoot for excess amount of money and things like that, but all money is not good money. Mm. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm always, I'm always aware of that. You know, if God wants me to have it, he'll allow it to be. And I've been, I've let go of some opportunities to get better ones. I've let go of opportunities. That I feel like, are probably once in a lifetime, but better ones have come. And it just goes to show that God is truly faithful if you give him the gr the glory and the honor. And I honor him through my work 100%. Now, I'm not out here. You're never going to see me out here doing nothing thirsty, like, you know, these cats out here taking pictures, you know, in their underwear and stuff. I'm not going to be that type of thing. You know what I'm saying? That's not my, That's not ever going to be my flow. So before I even started this journey, I, I made a vow to myself that I would not compromise my soul mm. for any mm. industry. Mm. 
Yo, man, I, I think that's so transferable for people, regardless of what it is, right? You always hear this story. My mom used to talk about how, you know, before, you know, she became, before she kind of was like working, she was just like, I'll, I just find what I'm, what it meant for me to be a good mother. Because always yeah. when you start, it's always, you're always going to keep shifting the goalpost if you haven't defined it up front. And so I could hear that. Yeah. And she said, like, there's certain ways, no, no matter what's happening in my life, there's a way I wanted to show up. Right. And so for you, you said, no matter what's happening with opportunities, this is how I'm going to roll. Yo, there's, bro, th there's another thing that, man, I, I think that I admire so much. And this may not even be a thought. This may have just been because of the open doors that have come. But sometimes you can imagine it's, you see this in fashion. You see this in other consumer brands and the like where it's it's not hot until, quote unquote, general market touches it. Meaning, you know, meaning that you have there have been iconic brands within our community that you've been aligned to. Right. And and, yeah. and, and and have been rooted with and doing great work with. And that's opened doors to so many other things. But there's been but but there's been some there have been some ta talent and, and people who have gift things where it's almost like I haven't made it until I've done something. And they kind of don't necessarily don't want to be, quote unquote, pigeonholed. So you see there's an acting and the like. How yeah. how did you navigate that in a way? Because I think that's why I think there's so much pride in seeing your success. Because I think you embrace the culture, you embrace the people, and you're like, God got me, and we're gonna go where we need to go. Like, what has that? What has that conversation in your head and with God been like? Whoa, man! Because I know where I've started from, right? So, three words: anything is plenty. Mm. You know what I, mean? I, I I literally take that because grateful is in my bio. Mm. So, I'm, I'm paraphrasing: anything is plenty to me. I worked at Denny's, man. I've worked, I've done janitorial work. I've done dishwashing. I've done manual labor with these hands. And that has not left me. You know what I'm saying? I can serve willingly. I can, I'm, I'm multifaceted in that degree, in that, in that, in that regard. But anything is plenty, man. Like I don't take every opportunity, any opportunity for granted. They don't have to cast me. It's a lot of cats. This market is saturated with plenty of models that have looks and portfolios better than mine. You know what I'm saying? But for whatever reason, God has put, bestowed this favor over my life. And there are, are brands that are willing to work with me and reach out and uh, they love how I present my product, right? They love, you know, like this, I say like, I always say this, check this out. We got a hundred pizza delivery company, right? And you can order pizza anywhere. What makes your pizza so special? See, for me, the preparation. Mm. I source the most rarest ingredients. I only work out the most the most vigorous. Nobody's going to outwork me, and that's how I feel. Mm. And when I present, when I go to deliver it, the delivery is going to be so luxurious; it's going to be second to none. You're going to win. You're going to want it again. That's creating demand for me. And because God has elevated my thinking to a way that's just like, you know what, I'm going to separate you and put you on this level of thinking, you know, after being in a confidence crisis so low, the way that I feel about myself isn't, isn't, you know, boastful. It's like, I'm so confident, so grateful to God that he's humbly given me this, uh, this gift to just be able to sell things and, and do it, do it tastefully too. I mean, I can do it my way. And, um, you know, just just understanding that it doesn't have to be me, mm. and being a every single every single campaign, every single brand, I always make sure that I personally reach out and be like, you know what? Thank you so much for me to be even able to contribute to your vision. Just to let them know, like, I, you know, not and and every time I do that, they're always like, oh, like, you, like you're really like talent doesn't do that. Like I'm always asking them to pick stuff up and and looking at me like you don't need to touch nothing. Mm. But it's just how I am. It's my stewardship, like you said. Mm. Yo, this is, man, this is key, man. It's just refreshing to hear, man, to be honest, man. We, you and I talked offline, and I just said, like, I love these conversations, man. But it, 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 it ministers to me just as a brother, just to see the, the power of humility, the power mm. of recognizing where you come from, the power of recognizing the privilege in the opportunity. I think sometimes lost in a view, in a time where, you look at social media, they, they see the pictures. It, it almost seems like it was like this. They don't see the Denny's. Yeah. They don't see the, the 345, the 750. They don't see that. They're like, oh, I just need to take a couple photos and I'll be good. And actually hearing that on the other side. And then when you do make it, having their character to sustain, to recognize, you know, where you came from. 
and you know what yeah. you're bringing. I think that changes the energy on the set. That changes people um, for for the better. Yo, I gotta ask this question, man. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, there, there's no entitlement on my end. I don't feel entitled. You know what I mean? God can take this from me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Take it from me in an hour. I can, I can. Anything can happen. Everything can just. But that's why my gratitude, my man, I'm getting goosebumps. My gracious, the fact I'm so gracious and just so grateful to him for, you know, man, I've had near death experience. I've had guns pointed in my face, bro. I've, my life was literally in somebody else's hand. And I just understand my purpose is greater because of that, that specific read, that moment too is like, I could be gone, but I'm still here. And I'm like, you know, I have to make sure that God is at the forefront of everything that I do. Mm -hmm. It's only through him that I'm here. Mm -hmm. Yo, I, I mean, even as we're on the, on, 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 on the tail of this joint, man, I'm, I'm curious, man, because I think what's clear is, is the, the, the spiritual component and, and God's place in how you do what you do, why you do what you do is clear, I think, through what you've said, shared here. But I think there's just that tangible, the energy piece, right? Meaning that yeah. I think, especially in the pandemic, for people who have not necessarily had work where they've had to leave the home or be outside to make sure just sometimes the energy you hear people just sometimes they're like, it's not even depressed. It's just the energy to do everything. I mean, get up. I wonder how do you stay recharged? How do you stay sort, you know, like locked in with all the work that you're doing that are kind of that's so full in this, how do you plug in? What's your rhythm with God on a daily basis that kind of for you to say, what's an ideal day where you're like, yo, this is, I'm going to have the maximum output. This is how I got to connect with God for me to be right. Is it, is it just the prayer per hour? Is there additional elements to it? What's your day like? So, sorry, I had a call. I had a call come in. All good, no problem. You like so? You're like so? You about to answer? Yep. Yeah. So, so the elements that go into it, I number one thing, I in my night, whether it be you know on my knees in the front room or I'm laying in the bed, and just thank God for the day. Thank mm. you for getting me. Thank you for seeing me, seeing my family, my friends, my loved ones, everybody that's safe. Thank you. You know, and I wake up the next day gracious and grateful. I go out throughout my day just gracious and grateful. I mean, I'm always just, you know, it's random moments. I'm just like, thank you, God. And it's just like, you know, it's just innate. It's just like second nature. I don't, I don't purposely just, I don't do it just for, you know, because I, I'm going to get something. Like, no, I just, I'm just extremely, extremely grateful. Lawrence, like, you know, my life has been changed for just, I mean, I couldn't have thought about this working at Denny's 10 to 6 in the morning. I'm talking about, man, I, and then coming to do a movie and work with some of the most respected brands, like you said, I mean, I have no choice but to thank him. Mm. Every, it, I mean, uh, <laughs> it, the salvation, I thank him for salvation. Just mm. absolutely. There's no way I can absolutely even be where I am without salvation. My soul is been saved mm -hmm. and baptized, made, made anew, right? And like I say, I always say I'm not perfect. I do not make this. I do not try and be perfect. I make mistakes. I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like everybody. <laughs> yep. But I, you know, my, I mean, well, my intent is always A1. I'm always trying to be as selfless as I can and give as much of myself as I can. I'm, the, I'm probably... I don't ask for a lot. I really don't, Lawrence. You know what I mean? And that's why I feel like God gives me so much sometimes, mm. you know? Brother, and I can have to kind of an oxymoron because you kind of have to ask God for the things that you that you want, but I think he knows my heart enough to know what I, the desires are being met right now. Like, I'm getting some great opportunities. I'm working towards more, and I know God is seeing me through what I need to be sought through. Brother, man, uh, you know, I, I, I'm... You can't help, man, if your brother or sister not to, to not cheer and, and champion you, bro, because of that. Because I also say, because I think a lot of people, based on what you just said, are fearful, right? A lot of times God doesn't come to the surface because they then feel that weight that people going to be like, oh, why? Oh, this guy trying to act like he's something. Let's figure out when he's going to fall so we can call him. Wow. You know, there's so much respect that I have for the fact since day one, as no coincidence, day one. You were kind of like, yeah. yo, thank God. Thank you, Lord. You chose me. Yo, please. Right. And so this is why I think that you are such a powerful vessel for the kingdom, bro. And, I, and I'll say this too. 
I'm, imagine a brother or sister kind of sitting in the position that you're in. They're ha- they're in their they're 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 doing their Denny they're doing their Denny's work. They're kind of like I'm doing what I need to do. I'm content. Um, uh, I, and I'm grateful I have life. But doing what I need yeah. to do, or for them, it is like it's essentially whether it's their mind being the gun to their face, or literally, yeah. and they're just curious around like, yo, man, yo, Chris, I don't even, you know, I'm hearing about this God thing. You know, I'm I'm hearing kind of your story, man. You know, like what what would you what would you share with them for that person who's a bit curious, unsure about kind of where their life is going, and is just trying to just get some OG knowledge from you around like, yo, man, what what do you think my next step will be, man? I'm just trying to hear you out. Your story's inspiring, bro. What do you what would you recommend? Look, man, honestly, you know, I would level with the person because I've I've been at every level of frustrated. Even at God, like David was. Remember when David got put, got asked to be in a in a in a higher place of responsibility, mm-hmm. and he didn't feel like he was ready. Mm-hmm. I would honestly give them that story. Mm-hmm. David wasn't ready. He just wasn't ready. He didn't want the responsibility that God was giving, him. Mm-hmm. and you know, it was getting harder. And it, and I felt the same thing. And I was like, man, this is like this is a lot. Having to be at call times, mind you, I'm worth working at Denny's and doing just able to be free, but having call times, being here, going out to be here, stay here till then. And, you know, I'm like, this is a lot. This is demanding. I don't want to do this. I don't even think I want to even do this no more. But I would tell that person, do not give up on what God has in store for you, Mm -hmm. especially because you are a believer. You have an even bigger responsibility to eat because you know who you're accountable to. Mm -hmm. Even if if you're juggling with the fact of, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Um, Find certainty through prayer and find certainty through other people who will hold you accountable. Because even if you even if you can't find you need to start holding yourself accountable, too. I had to do that. It's the toughest conversation with yourself. You go have to have you have to be brutally honest with yourself. Point out all your flaws, how how lazy, what areas you've been lazy in, what areas you can be stronger in, why you're so weak in certain levels at certain areas and, and make the adjustment. Kids complain, adults adjust. Mm. And we need to be able to adjust. Whatever our lives are not where we want it to be. There's always an adjustment to be made because if there's a problem, there's a solution. That's just how I see it. <laughs> Kids complain, adults adjust. <laughs> oh, man. This, brother man, yo, you know, I, I, I'm, brother man, I think on, on behalf, this is not going to be the only conversation. We're we going to have a few conversations. I, already, I think I'm, we got to run this, we got to run this back. I'm saying, it in, I'm saying it in faith, man, because, bro, you know, you're, you're, you're winning because you know God. You know, if nothing else happened, if God didn't do anything else in any of our lives, man, that's, a, that's a win. But <clears throat> you're, you're one, your brother that I think people want to see win because of the spirit of him that he, you, that, that, that he, that he, you carry, man. And so, man, I just got to say, I'm having the people, man, I just thank God that you kind of answered the call that even when you were kind of smelling like sheep, you still were able to be called out of the space and and, into something higher like David, right? Who didn't know he was a king and would be. Real quick, real quick. I dabbled in that other side. So it wasn't always that I would just play the the good, good, goody two. You know, I know we're got, I've been on the other side of where I know where the scandalous people are and what they doing (laughs) and. I know that I know that side too. Don't get me wrong, which is why I don't want that. I've mm-hmm. I've had it, I've tasted both both plates. That the 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 other side is fun. It's easy, and that's why so many people gravitate towards the fun plate because it's an easy plate. You can finish that plate easy. You got a little bit more elements on the other side that you got to try and kind of figure out why these pieces, why these foods work together to do what they do. When you get a fun plate, it's like, hey, man, do what you want to do. Oh, for real? Oh, eating off this plate, this plate, this plate. But this side is a little bit more structured. You know what I mean? You're going to have to kind of take your time on it with this plate. You got to kind of figure out who to do what on this plate. You know what I'm saying? So and I always say this, too. It's almost like going to a car dealership. You know, it's a it's a, it's a hundred Hondas. Hundred Honda dealerships, Toyotas, and everything like that. Mm-hmm. We don't see race commercials. We don't see Ferrari commercials. We don't see that because then they, we understand that it takes a little bit more production value, a little bit more value to make a, a, a more expensive product. So when you're being developed by God, it's going to take you a little bit more, but you're going to be worth that much more. But you can be made you know, by the world, 
Because when God cast Satan out of heaven, he gave him power over the world. That, this is his playground. This is why we have choices of good and evil. It is good and bad. Not all power was taken from him when God take him, cast him from, Satan, from uh, heaven. He gave him the world. This is the, this is the devil's playground. We got to make the best decisions while we're here mm. to get out of there. And that's just what it is. Brother, man, I, we, like, I, I, this, is, this has been a round of these conversations, man. I can't put anything on that, man. I think God closed that and you, you, you were speaking. And, I, and I'm, I continue to pray that you have more and more opportunities to speak behind the camera, front of the camera, in front of brothers and sisters, inspiring them as you have been through your obedience and your work, good brother. Brother, how, how, do, how do the people find you? How do the people follow you and support you? What do you got coming up that we could be on the lookout for that we could amplify, bro? Absolutely. So first of all, my main source of social media is Instagram. You can find me at uh, I am underscore Chris F. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I got a couple of good projects in the works. I'm working on a web TV series with my uh, with a good director friend of mine. I got a couple campaigns coming up with some brands I can't say. Yeah, NDA. But, uh, <laughs> and they are coming and you will see. The proof is in the pudding, man. I mean, I try and work. I don't try and broadcast everything. The movie is out right now. Go see uh, he said, she said, exclusively playing on Tubi. Um, we're doing great on that. Um, like I said, I'm just grateful, man. I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm able to see my son. Is I'm able to create this legacy for my son and put him on too. So uh, I'm just gracious, man. I'm grateful. Brother. Man, gl glory, to, glory to God, man. Thank God, man. I can't wait until things open up. I come, I come see you out there in L.A. We get down, good brother. But all respect to you, brother. All respect, man. I love you like a brother, man. And uh, I'm excited for what oh, God is doing, bro. All right? All right, man. All right, salute.